Hey there, it's John with Heroes and Legends. Today is day two of official Eldritch Moon spoilers, so we have a lot of cards to take a look at again. Not quite as many as yesterday, but still quite a few. We have 12 brand new, never before seen cards. So let's jump in and see what we got. Now we're gonna start things off with a card that's actually not one of the new spoilers, but a card that was, I don't know, spoiled slash leaked a week ago. And my assumption is a retailer had a copy of the poster that showcased this card as a launch promo. And we saw this maybe a little bit early. Well, here it is, officially confirmed, Identity Thief. I won't go into a lot of detail on this card today since we talked about it in a previous video. So if you'd like to hear my thoughts on it, check out that video. Uh, but here it is, official. And we also have, for the first time, the art for Identity Thief in the regular set. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. Now, having said that, let's move on to the new stuff. And we're gonna start off with, imagine this, an amazing white card. <laughs> so, Lone Rider, one white, one generic. It's a one, one human knight, first strike lifelink at the beginning of the end step. If you gain three or more life this turn, transform Lone Rider, transforms into it that rides as one, <laughs> four, four, Eldrazi Horror, first strike, trample, lifelink. Well, where do I begin? <laughs> so, another just fantastic white card. It's gonna see standard play. This will be good, maybe a little bit better in the green white versions of the deck as opposed to the mono white, but we saw a little card yesterday called Blessed Alliance, which allows you to gain four life, which would flip this, which is actually pretty awesome, and this could potentially work in the mono white deck in that case. However, there's also some things in the green deck that will help pump this to get the points of lifelink across. For example, you got your Mocha's Command, you have Nyssa, cards like that. Having said that, this is fantastic. I think this is another one that's gonna be the real deal. This will be good for you and limited, but certainly standard playable. All right, next card is Sanctifier of Souls. This is the white intro pack card. This is a white and three, human cleric, two, three. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Sanctifier of Souls gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Pay a white and two, exile a creature card from your graveyard, put a one, one white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Now the thing with these intro deck cards, typically they're not super exciting. They're good limited cards and this one, is pretty much the same thing. I mean, there's so many amazing white cards you're gonna play in standard. This isn't going to make that list. However, this is going to be a very good limited card for you if you happen to open this in sealed or if you draft it. It's a hard card to deal with. I mean, you're paying a little bit too much for a 2-3 and you're paying four for a 2-3. However, later in the game, you have some stuff in your graveyard either through just playing the game and having creatures die or perhaps you're milling yourself, what have you you're gonna get some pretty decent value out of this card. So long games, this will do a lot of work for you. Certainly worth running in your 23, I would say. Next we have Docent of Perfection, which transforms into Final Iteration. This is a 5-4 Insect Horror with flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a 1-1 one, one blue human wizard creature token on the battlefield. Then if you control three or more wizards, transform. This becomes a 6-5 Eldrazi Insect with flying. Wizards you control get plus 2 plus 1 and have flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a 1-1 one, one blue human wizard creature token on the battlefield. This card is pretty awesome. So if nothing else, I love the flavor. I mean, check out the art. Obviously this is a play off Delver of Secrets and how that's been a kind of ongoing thing as we move through the sets. And now we have the fly capturing the humans and then the humans and the flies converging into one entity. This is really cool from a flavor standpoint. I, I love when they kind of build off past cards and I'm a sucker for that type of thing. <laughs> so having said that, this is really good and limited, obviously. It's gonna be a flyer, a little pricey at five, but in limited, that's not a problem. And whether you have a lot of wizards or not, you're still getting a lot of value out of this. And if you have some instants and sorceries, great, you get additional value. But even if you don't, this is still a fine card. As far as constructed goes, we're looking at standard. I think it's a little too pricey for standard to really find a home. Now, if there was a real strict control deck in the meta, maybe a blue-white control deck or something like that. And I feel like they've teased us with the pieces of a good control deck over the last few sets, but it just never really came together. If that were to exist, this could be a win condition for a deck like that, but I think that's a pretty long shot, unfortunately. Now, we are gonna see some pieces coming up today for a deck that 
maybe this could fit into a is it tempo style deck perhaps this would work in a deck like that but again probably a long shot where this really shines is going to be commander uh, this is going to be really awesome in commander especially if you want to put together some sort of wizard build this will be perfect for something like that and i think that's where this card is really going to make its mark Next we have another transform card, Grizzled Angler, which turns into Grizzly Angler Fish. And this costs a blue and two, it's a human, two, three. Tap, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then if there's a colorless creature card in your graveyard, transform. Transforms to a four or five Eldrazi Fish. And if you pay six, creatures your opponents control attack this turn if able and i assume they word it like that for two-headed giant purposes because obviously if you're playing normal multiplayer like commander only one opponent would be able to attack at a time now this card is fine and limited again this is more of a limited all-star than anything cost three for two three i'm more than happy to play that and it does allow me to mill myself there there are going to be decks that want to do that that's good and on top of it, if it does flip, maybe I have some Eldrazi's in my deck, then I get myself a 4-5, and the fact that I can force my opponent to attack kind of really messes up their board state. So blue, of course, being the color of high defense, at least in this Innistrad world, a lot of high toughness creatures, you force your opponent to attack into them, they don't get a whole lot of value, and then you attack back with, at the very least, a 4-5, and get some damage across. Good card for when limited games go long. Next we have Niblis of Frost. This one's interesting. Two blue, two generic. It's the blue intro pack card. It's a spirit, flying prowess, 3-3, three, three, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Now, I said this earlier, typically these intro pack cards aren't super exciting. This one feels a lot more push to me. I actually feel like there's a possibility that this could see some standard play. Now, as far as limited goes, this is a bomb. I really like this card in limited. I'm very happy paying four for a three three flyer with prowess. And then the fact that if I have some instants and sorceries, I get even more value out of it. Sign me up. This is fantastic and limited. The reason I think this might even be standard playable again is because of the pieces of this tempo deck we're starting to see. If the tempo deck can be a thing in the metagame, if it can stand up to some of these more aggressive builds, and maybe this will be post rotation, I don't know. But if it can get there, then this could see some play in standards. So keep an eye on it. Don't forget this card exists. It's, it's kind of exciting. Take inventory. This is another interesting one. One blue, one generic. It's a sorcery. Draw a card. Then draw cards equal to the number of cards named take inventory in your graveyard. This is kind of a play off accumulated knowledge. If you've ever played with accumulated knowledge, you know that is a very, very powerful card. <laughs> this is a weaker version of that, but that's okay because obviously they're not going to print anything like accumulated knowledge again today. Also notice that this card only checks your graveyard, not all the other graveyards, which makes sense. I mean, that's the direction Wizards has been trying to go in over the last few years they don't want you to feel bad about playing any of your cards because you're going to give your opponent an advantage because something's either on the battlefield or in your graveyard so they tend to limit it to your board space which they did in this card obviously first time you play this card it cycles not super exciting but as you play more copies you do get more value out of the card and let's face it there's not a whole lot of good card draw slash selection cards right now in standard or necessarily even in modern there's not that many because all the good ones have been banned <laughs> so because of that i think this will see some standard play somewhere along the line again this would make sense in a tempo is a deck so maybe that's why it exists uh, this is going to be fine in limited but probably more so in draft if you know you can pick up two or three of these on its own it's very very underwhelming so in sealed you might not use it quite as much but there's just so many better choices out there when you start thinking about formats like commander next we have unsubstantiate one blue and one it's an instant return target spell or creature to its owner's hand I think this is the best card of the day. This card is actually very, very powerful. Now, think Remand, 
and then add the fact that if you don't want to return a spell to your opponent's hand, you can instead return a creature to their hand. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Remand is an awesome card. This builds off of that, and I'm very happy to see it at Uncommon. I wouldn't have been shocked if this was a rare, and I guess maybe Wizards let it pass at Uncommon because it's not a counter spell. It's just a tempo play, but it's still a very, very good card. Another reason I think that the Is It deck could be a thing a tempo is a deck could definitely be a thing in standard uh, this would be a part of it this will see standard play this will see modern play and it's obviously a fantastic limited card and great in other formats such as commander 2 so this is an all-around all-star like i said maybe my pick of the day and we also get the game day promo version of the card usually i like the full art game day promo cards but i had really not thrilled about this art i guess it's an eldrazi and something's going on there but oh well what can you do i like the original version though very much all right noose graph mob two black four generic it's a zombie and when this enters the battlefield you get five plus one plus one counters on it and whenever a player casts a spell remove a plus one plus one counter you get a 2-2 black zombie creature token on the battlefield. This card's interesting. This is the black intro pack card. What's a little awkward about it is it feels a little pricey at 6 for a 5-5, but there is a lot of value to be had here in Limited. If I need a 5-5, this probably isn't the card I want to play. <laughs> But if I'm going wide and maybe I have a zombie theme going on, we haven't seen a lot of the black cards from this new set, but again, I feel like we're going to see a lot of zombies, a lot of zombie token generation and stuff. If I'm on that plan in limited, this is a pretty good card. When you think about it, I'm paying five for five power and five toughness initially, but as I cast spells and as my opponents cast spells, at the end of the day, I could end up with 10-10 power toughness on the board in the form of 5-2-2s. That seems actually pretty good. Keep an eye on this card in Limited. Watch for it. It might not be highly drafted early on until people start to figure it out, but I think it's a little better than it looks on paper. Next, we have Assembled Alphas. This is the red intro pack card. One red, five generic. It's a wolf, five, five. And when this blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, it deals three damage to that creature and three damage to that creature's controller. Again, another really good limited card. A little pricey at six, but I think it's worth paying for it at the top of your curb in limited. A five, five is just fine. But the fact that your opponent really has to think about their combat with this card, and not only that, but it can potentially damage your opponent especially if they're in a situation that's a chump block or something it becomes pretty good especially in the late game next we have galvanic bombardment one red it's an instant and this deals x damage to target creature where x is two plus the number of cards named galvanic bombardment in your graveyard now this is a play off an old card kindle much like we saw a play off accumulated knowledge earlier same idea here this is maybe a watered down version because it can't impact players only creatures however it does cost one generic mana less so that's kind of nice they did make up for that now having said that this is still an amazing card if nothing else it's a shock shock is a good card especially in this environment there's a lot of one two toughness creatures a lot of tokens and things like that running around so this is going to do work for you and if you draft a few copies of this in limited you're all set this can be very 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 good fantastic limited card this will see play in standard this could even see play in modern it's not going to burn out an opponent obviously but in recent history red's been more about burning out the creatures and then attacking in with a lot of small creatures and just being aggressive in that way i could see this maybe being in a boros deck we're starting to see some red aggressive cards in this set that might complement the white ones very well in standard and again if there is a is a tempo deck this could be a part of it Next, we have a card that was spoiled from a French language spoiler, loosely translated, Influence of Emrakul, two green, two generic, enchantment. When you cast an Eldrazi creature spell with a converted mana cost of seven or more, draw two cards. I think this is a fine limited card. I don't really see this getting into standard or anything like that. It's just a little too contingent upon other things going on in your deck and on the battlefield. But in limited, I think this could be fine in the right deck. I think where this will shine is maybe a draft strategy around some of the emerge creatures. We saw one yesterday. I'm sure there's more, but they're big Eldrazi, high converted mana cost. However, if you sacrifice a creature, you can play them much cheaper. Seems like in the case like that, you get a fair amount of value with a card like this. 
This will be good in limited. This will be good in commander as well if you're playing maybe an Eldrazi commander deck or maybe putting some of those new emerge cards in your commander deck. And now for the last spoiler of the day, it is the green intro pack card, Ulvenwald Observer. Two green, four generic. It's a tree folk, six, six. Whenever a creature you control with toughness four or greater dies, draw a card. Now, in limited, I'm not super thrilled with 6-6 six, six that costs 6 and doesn't have some sort of evasion or at least trample or something like that. I feel like that is almost necessary to push the card into being a great limited card. It's a fine limited card, though, I and mean, a 6-6 six, six for 6 is still going to be okay for you in limited, especially sealed. However, there is a nice perk to this card if you're playing other larger creatures. If you're in that business, then you'll run this and you'll be very happy you might get some value out of it. I think where this card will really shine though is Commander. I think this is awesome in Commander for certain decks. I'm thinking things like the Doran deck, stuff like that. I think you can get a lot of value in cases like that with this card. So having said that, those are the spoilers for today. We'll be back tomorrow with another video and we will bring together all the spoilers from the last 24 hours. We'll continue to do that every day we have spoilers until a week from Friday when we'll begin our full set review for Eldritch Moon. Until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. This video, like all my videos, was made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Even a donation of a dollar helps me to keep growing this community and creating better quality videos for all of you. Check out our Patreon page for exclusive giveaways and future goals for the channel. If you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, product openings, or finance videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a good day.